Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And welcome to anybody that's joining us again for another episode. And any new time listeners, thank you for giving us your time and your ear. Yes, welcome. Hope you have fun. We do with it. Um, This is episode five. The Truths, Myths, and Misconceptions of Psychic Ability. (gasps) All right. I want to hear all about it. I am very excited about this episode. I've been looking forward to this one. We've had some discussions, as we do. Yes. So, but before we jump into that, did you want to do a recap last week? Any kind of comments, reviews? Yes, we have a new iTunes review, and we love these. Just so everybody knows, we love these reviews wherever they are, iTunes, Facebook, anywhere. It helps us. It helps people to find us. So we we really do... um, we like these, and, and they help us, too, with putting the show together, knowing what you all like to listen to and talk about. So this is uh, another five-star review that came in on Saturday. It says, since listening to Samantha and Danny on episode one, I am always eager for the next one. I was raised atheist and still don't really know what could be. But these podcasts get you thinking and hoping. It opens up your mind and allows you to think things you may have never thought about. Definitely worth a listen. No downright religion talk, just guidance to the spiritual realm. That's cool. Yay. Thank you to yes, whoever did that. Thank you very it's much. Really nice. We really appreciate that. We really do. It's and always nice to hear some comments. Yes. So keep them coming. And your question. Yes. So let's see what else do I have for you. We now have a Twitter. <gasps> and... You can find that spiritual philosophy chatter with the Joneses, but the short version of it is at spiritual chats. Nice. Okay. Way to go. Hey. We're all over the place. We are. Crazy. Gotta get yourself out there. <coughs> and then I have one more exciting thing to announce. I have been giving away a half hour reading on my reading page. For those of you that don't know, I have a free reading page on Facebook with my friend Chelsea and a couple of other readers, and it is called Free Pet Psychic Medium and Astrology Readings and Spiritual Growth. So if you start to type that in on Facebook, it should come up and you'll see that I'm an administrator and that's a good way to find my group. And what we do in this group is is like snippet readings. We uh, People will put up a picture, and we do mini readings for them to kind of show them what our different readers can do. So it's a great group. We have a lot of wonderful readers. And so let's give away this this half-hour reading. Let's do it. Yay. All right. All right. We're ready. The winner is Colleen Hartness. You are the winner. Congratulations, Colleen. Congratulations. I will send you a private message, and I look forward to doing your reading. Cool. Hey. Cool. Good for you. Glad you're doing that for people. Oh, I love it. Pay it forward. Spread the love. Absolutely. Bring it in. Okay, so are we ready to get started with our topic? Episode 5, here we come. Yeah. Episode 5, The Truth, Myths, and Misconceptions of Psychic Abilities. So first I want to say that I don't really like the word psychic. I think that it has a lot of stigma to it and confuses people. But I think that if we start throwing words out like intuitive and medium and all these other things, it's just going to make it even more confusing. So for this podcast episode, we're going to use the word psychic to refer to these kind of abilities. Sounds okay. good. Okay. We're clear. Perfect. All right. So first of all, because... I am me, and I like to look things up. I'm going to tell you the definition of a psychic. A psychic is a person who claims to use extrasensory perception, or ESP, to identify information hidden from the normal senses, particularly involving telepathy or clairvoyance, or who performs acts that are apparently inexplic- inexplicable by natural laws. 
there you go. Yes. Yes. I agree. I do too. So I think that it's important to say that before I learned that I was a medium, I was also a skeptic. So I do understand people that don't understand how this works or aren't completely convinced of it because I definitely was one of them. Absolutely. I totally get it from both sides. I mean, not hardcore on either, but just I've seen it from both sides. I, I can say now that I have seen it from both extremes because I have the abilities myself. And so for me, it's obviously undeniable, right? right? So I don't even, you know, oh, skeptic, whatever. But I get it for everybody else. So I'm not here to prove to you that this is real today, but I want this podcast episode to open everybody's eyes a little bit to what is actually out there and what these abilities actually are because we've been taught for so many years the wrong thing yeah wrong thing so we want to help spread the right things i agree so i started with doing a few polls on our facebook page and the first question that i asked our our followers was do you believe in psychic and 100 percent of them said yes wow that's impressive that 100 percent of the poll it is i I don't know if that's because people that believe in it already listen to our our podcast, but I don't tend to really believe that because most of our reviews and stuff have been from people that have said that they're somewhat skeptical. So if we've changed anybody to to believe, that's wonderful. I love that. Well, again, I I don't think we're here to change anybody's mind. No. We're not here to convert anybody. We're not even a religion. We just have a certain belief about some of the way this world works. And I think with as many millions and billions or whatever we have on this globe, that there has to be people that relate. Yes, absolutely. And we're just trying to connect with those that want to relate to this. Absolutely. And people that are looking for something deeper because... You know, yeah, we for all the get same to the... reason anybody walks into a church or walks right. into an AA meeting or walks into a bar, they want to feel a connection to other people. Right. And, you know, I've felt those kind of feelings of, you know, the hair on the back of your neck and the, mm-hmm. the presence in, in all these different types of rooms that were religious related and not religiously related. So it taught me that that, that energy, they're, they're there all the time. Yeah. I think that people genuinely want to believe that these abilities are real. But I think that if people believe, some people, then that changes everything. Yeah. It changes everything they've been taught. They have to reexamine their beliefs. And guess what? That's exactly what Danny and I have been going through for the last year and a half. Yep. Changing all of our thoughts so we get it. But I did look online to see what... The um, the national average is, and it's fifty eight percent that believe in psychic abilities. Wow, which well, is half high. of our country. That's good. That's, yeah, that's a pretty impressive number too. I think so. And then I asked, <laughs> "Do you feel that you have psychic ability?" And thirty six percent said yes. And I think that that's really low, because I honestly believe that we all have psychic abilities. I think. That I can't imagine that anybody listening right now hasn't had one of those moments where they've thought about somebody and then the phone is ringing, it's been that person, or, you know, something along those lines. For me, a lot of times I'll know that a client's going to text me before yeah. they do. What Just, is deja vu? Every human has right. deja vu. Exactly. Exactly. So these things are your intuition. They are your the psychic abilities that we talk about, but you haven't developed those. You haven't expanded on those. So they only happen every once in a while, but you may also hear things. I now recognize them and I never in a million years would have thought messages that sound like they're your own voice that are actually psychic messages or let's call them intuitive messages, but that's what they are. They are, your subconscious or your spirit guides or your family on the other side 
something is giving you that message, but it makes it sound like it's your own thought. Right. So you That's have to. That's been the hard, the hardest part for me about all this yeah. is that I felt like the intuition has. I'm not psychic by any means, so I don't have Samantha's uh, gifts in that area. But I do feel like the intuition um, been a growth, and that has been the trick of really learning. I always definitely hear the difference in hindsight Mm -hmm. it's hearing the difference right then when it's happening yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's still is something that i have a hard time with when i sit down and and do a reading it's very different i almost shut down when i do those but when things come through it comes through very differently so that's when i have to try and decipher whether that was an intuitive thought or my own thought and as time goes and i'm i'm exercising this muscle I'm getting better and better at it and I'm able to do more things on command and it is like working a muscle. It's just like that. If, yeah. And if I don't, if I let it go and I don't work on it, I have to start over again. I've done that. Yeah. I've done that already. So we're not going to do that again. Cause that's yeah, not I work. don't think <laughs> I walk through 24 hours of the day. No processing every single thought like this. No, no. I think it's when it, comes to something significant in my own mind i guess that i that's when it's like right okay what's the thought right where's that coming from exactly i i gave i have a good example actually last night we went out to eat and before we left i heard take your stomach pill and i wasn't tuning it out i was gonna take the stomach pill i just forgot and we went to dinner and i was miserable (laughs) <laughs> so yeah. it's it's things like that that when you hear those things like you know don't shut the door because your keys are inside sometimes you won't even know what it is that the reason why you're being told something do you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it, and that's okay you'll usually figure it out but if you feel that at that moment that different kind of feeling different kind of thought that's your intuition that's what I have. That's what other mediums and psychics have. Yeah. It is no different. It is just that we have built that muscle up and right. learned how to listen to it and not doubt ourselves. Yeah. It's much easier than people think. It's funny because this morning I said, you know, a friend had texted me mm-hmm. and um, it was a very nice text. Just kind of essentially good morning. It was thinking about you kind of thing. And um but at the same time, seem out of the ordinary, and uh-huh. I was thinking about him when I woke up. Yeah. So when that came in, I was like, hmm. Yeah. And I wonder if something Exactly. Up. But um, anyways. Yeah, and that's your, your intuition, and, and if more people listen to it and learn how to listen to it more often, life would be a lot smoother because they really do help you in your everyday life. I'm really learning to listen to that more and more. And the more that you listen to it and the more that you let them help you, they will. Bill, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. The next question was, do psychics know everything? And I was very happy that zero people answered this yes. Because psychics don't know everything. We really don't. It's, I don't even know how to begin to explain the things that we do know. It's very random. It's not predictable. (laughs) The predictions right. aren't predictable. <laughs> <laughs> it's chasing it's true. Your tail there. It is. Because we just never know. I mean, we were sitting at the table one night, and all of a sudden I was like, that's funny. I just saw a flash of Green Acres Restaurant. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember that. I had no idea what that was about yeah. at all. And then the next day saw on Facebook that they were closing. <laughs> so we don't even always know ourselves what it is that we're being shown. We have to analyze that. The Doing these types of readings is really like putting a puzzle together. Yeah. It's not straightforward. The spirits don't just sit there and talk to us and tell us everything verbatim like having a conversation. I don't know really why they do it the way that they do. I, I assume that it's because their vibrations are so much higher than ours yeah. that this is the only way that they can. Right. But there's different ways that like things come in. Okay. So you've probably heard of clairvoyance, but there's a whole lot of other areas in there. I'm not going to go into names and all that, but there's, there's knowing just like when you know, something's going to happen. 
there's seeing, so you have a vision. There's hearing, where I might, like, hear words or a sentence. And there's um, smell and taste. And all of your senses are included in that psychic sense and more. It's very crazy. So things come in differently all the time. And so there would be absolutely no possible way to know everything. It just wouldn't. No. And, and that's I wouldn't not want what to. it's meant for. Yeah, it's I wouldn't want to either. It's not at all what it's meant for. I think that a lot of times <clears throat> we use it for what it's not meant for, right. which is, I believe, predicting the future. But we also, it's a great gift to use for the thing. Like what you mentioned for. about the Mel Gibson movie, What Women Want. Like if oh, you walked my gosh. around no. and just no. had every thought, uh, no. No, and that kind of goes into the next question. But that's Hollywood. That is Hollywood, yeah, for sure. Take on it, you know. The next question I asked, which is kind of what you were just saying, is do psychics read your mind? And 17 people answered this question, and 15 answered no, and two answered yes. And so I got into a little bit of a discussion with, with a few people on this post, just trying to find out what they think that that means, mind reading. Because I personally do not believe that that's what we're doing. I cannot walk up to somebody and look at them and tell you what they are thinking, like that movie, What Women Want. If I could, I would probably be in a padded cell because nobody wants to hear anybody's thoughts. Nobody wants to hear my thoughts. Trust me. I don't want to hear everybody else's. So that is not how this works. And I, I, I used to think that, too. I absolutely think that. But it, it isn't how it works. So if you are around me or other psychics, mediums, just know that we're not reading your mind. No. However, things do happen that can be attributed to intuition and may be considered somewhat mind reading. Like, for example, we went to a friend's 50th birthday party a couple of weeks ago and they were cutting his birthday cake. And I was standing in front of him and all of a sudden I... I said out loud about the Office Space movie where they're cutting the cake and distributing it. I I said something about that. And then our friend, he said, oh, you got that from me. I was just thinking about that. So that kind of thing, you know, is it mind reading? Is it, what is it? I don't know. And then there was another time, if you remember, that I had a, a friend of mine here and we were sitting on the couch sending each other gifts back and forth. And I started sending her the gift that she was just getting ready to send me. That was weird. That was fun. I was like, how long is this going to go for? Because it just (laughs) kept going on. But I don't know that I'm doing those things. That's the weirdest part of it is that I don't know. Right. So I obviously can't be reading your mind if I don't even know what I'm doing. That makes sense. Yeah. So no mind reading, at least in that sense of the term. I think we've all probably noticed that when we're with somebody for long enough, like like you and I, you yeah. start to just know things. Do you know what I mean? Like you have that that tele- telepathic connection. Yeah. Sometimes we'll sniff at the same time. Sometimes we'll laugh the same way at the same time. It's right. really weird. I don't know if you've ever picked up on those little things. Oh, yeah. But it makes you wonder why do those things happen? Yeah. It's got to be somewhere in your intuition. <clears throat> Absolutely. I think if other animals can do it without speaking words, sure. um, then, you know, we can do it, Absolutely. you know, without speaking words, which, you know, I don't think we've talked about this was that video of the Labrador mother golden retriever or golden yeah. retriever mother that had about 10 puppies yeah. and they were separated for a moment. They let the mother in the room. <clears throat> with the 10 puppies and it was absolutely amazing yeah. how this mother controlled 10 puppies yep. and made it very clear without speaking a word that nobody gets anything no chow time until you all are calm and laying down and yep. she went to as each one of them did over the course of a few minutes she went and visited each one yep. around the room like checking in and talking to them yep she even kind of snaps at one yes, that's not paying attention. Mm-hmm. Probably would have been me <laughs> Probably. if I was in uh, <laughs> doggy form. But uh, it 
right there was like it spoke volumes to me yeah. that if I ever doubted that this is possible, it is possible. And if it's possible with an animal that has a smaller brain than you and I, yeah, come on now. It's just that we weren't taught to use that. Right. I really believe that if we knew more about, like, the Egyptians and, yeah. and those kind of civilizations, that they used this more. Yeah. I, they didn't have the kinds of things that we have now, email and all that stuff. How did they communicate with each other? I'm going to guess telepathy because right. they were very smart. And they did, yeah, a lot of psychic work. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. <laughs> so. Let's get on to my next poll question. The next one, this is one of my favorite questions, is should psychics tell you if something bad is going to happen? And this was split 50-50. Said yes and said no. And so coming from my point of view, I do not believe, and it is somewhat a code of ethics with psychics, that we're not supposed to tell bad things. For a few reasons. And, and let me tell you a story. I have a friend. I'm going to leave her name out. And around, I want to say January-ish, I had um, one of those, like I was saying about just those knowings. Yep. I just knew she was going to be in a car accident. And I said to you that I yeah, knew she you was. Yeah, share a lot of these things with me. And sometimes, I guess I'm, you know, you kind of get used to it <laughs> or desensitized. So yeah. you'll come out and say, I had this weird thought or vision of such and such, and I'll be like, oh, wow, that's a bummer. And I really don't think much right. about it because it hasn't happened. Right. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a week later, I mean, no, it wasn't a devastating, nobody got dead. No, 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 you know, thank no. God. But just the fact that you even picked up on that was like, wow. Right. <laughs> but I, it did happen. So yeah. our listeners know the accident did happen. Yeah. Um, I believe it was the beginning of April. Yeah. <clears throat> we were out when I received that text and I was, it was one of those moments that I was even blown away because I really was hoping that I was wrong. And so a lot of the times when I have things like that, I don't want to tell people because there is always that possibility that I'm wrong. There's always that possibility that it's the wrong person that I'm seeing the vision of. I had a vision um, probably over a year ago about one of my brother's friends being in a relationship, and it was the wrong friend. But it, it was, they, you know, right. I knew that that's what it was. I just thought it was a different friend. So we don't always know the exact. So if we were to tell people things like that and then they happen differently, but going back to the story about, about my friend, I decided that I was going to tell her after the accident that I knew. And she wasn't really happy with me. She, I said that I couldn't tell her. And she said, yes, you could. You could have told me. And, and, and I tried to explain that I couldn't. It really isn't up to me. I'm told whether I can or right. not. And right. I was specifically told that I couldn't because I would could possibly be altering history if I did. And... The thing is, is that everything is connected. And so that accident actually, in the long run, ended up being a positive because she got a new car out of it. And she's okay. And it, like you said, nobody's dead. It wasn't a big deal. Something good came out of it. Right. But at first, she, she wasn't happy. And then once she let it set in, she understood. What was I supposed to do? I had this in January, if I would have told her in January and she would have just kept thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in a car accident, I'm going to be in a car accident, she either wouldn't have left the house or she would have been such a stress case every time she left the house that would the accident have happened? I don't know, but right. maybe a worse accident would have happened from all the stress that right. she was putting herself under. So there's another reason of why we can't all these types of things. I totally agree. I, I agree with you. I think that telling people something bad's going to happen um for those that that do believe in this and and um they're going to run around trying to change the or alter the course of what's right. supposed to happen. Right. And that in turn just causes even more chaos. So I don't think I think it should be a code of ethics. I don't yes. think you should share how people's demise comes or how, you know, how they die or 
Or, yeah, they, I definitely life agree is with about that. experience. It's not about knowing everything in advance. It is. And and like I said, there's really a trail for everything, you know. Um and I think I've told you this story before that my my mom used to see psychics all the time. So I, this is nothing new to me. I've seen so many psychics in my life myself. But there was one that my mom saw that told her that she was going to have a son with red hair, which she did end up having. Yeah. That same psychic told her that somebody that she knew was going to die in a plane crash. Well, my grandfather had his own plane. And so every time after that that my grandfather would take his plane out, my mom was a basket. It never happened. My mom even died before he did. <laughs> so, and she never wow. knew anybody yeah. that we know of that died in a plane crash. So she worried all those years for right. no reason. Maybe it was somebody she went to high school with that ends up dying yeah. after your mom passed away. And that happens all I the mean, time okay. too. With so with things. there's no confirmation. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah. sharing stuff like that. <laughs> it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, it's just going to upset people. And I've been on the other side of it, too. I, I think I've told you this story. I'm not sure, but I'll share it with our listeners, is that uh, the lady that originally communicated with my mom for me, Highland, I had a reading from her in 2001, I want to say, somewhere around there. And she came out to the house and did the reading for me and left. And my ex-husband was out all day um, with a friend riding. He had a, a street bike. And so he was at his mom's house and called and said that he was coming home. And about 10 minutes later, I got a phone call that he had been in a really bad accident. And it was bad. It, he was okay. But he had some pretty bad body damage. And his bike was totaled. And so I wondered, the psychic was just at my house. Why did she not tell me that within an hour of her leaving, my husband was going to be in a car accident, yeah. you know? So the next day I called her and I, I said, did you happen to know that anything was going to happen last night? And she said, well, I knew your husband was going to be in some kind of automobile accident. So <clears> I can't tell you that because it changes the course of things. And it took me a while to accept that, but I really understood after a while that it's very possible because he never rode a street bike again. It's very possible that if that accident wouldn't have happened, he could have gotten in a worse accident down mm -hmm. the road. So that could have been a blessing in disguise. True. So these things happen for a reason. And no matter how much, even if they did tell you, no matter how much you tried to avoid whatever yeah. they were saying, you're going to do one of two things. Well, you're definitely never going to avoid it. No, you're not. It's, and, just, it's still going to happen just another but way. But you're going to live your life in paranoia. Right. So it, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, absolutely. You know, the intuitive part about, for me, of, and this is kind of an epiphany I just had sitting here thinking about this, is remember when we first, we've lived in this house for like five years? Yeah. Going on six? Yeah, something like that. Um, When we first moved in here, I mean, I knew that you weren't like a super big fan of it per se. Um, I've lived in way worse, for uh -huh. sure. The house, I like the house. Yeah, but we rent. But anyways... I remember walking in and seeing this room. Yeah. And I turned to the lady and I said, I'll pay you cash yeah. deposit right now. Yeah. Because I knew like something. And now I'm sitting here, you know, in the Brown Sound Studios and I'm realizing what that was. Right. That was pushing me because I had told you once we had rented the place, I knew that. This would be good, A, for the band, right. obviously, to play music and, and stuff like that. But something was telling me, and essentially, like, build it and they will come. Right, for like, sure. So I started investing in studio stuff. Um, otherwise, it was just an empty yeah. room, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that in hindsight, and I see how strong that feeling was intuitively. Yeah. And it makes sense now. It, yeah. And sometimes it does take years to look back and see those things and go, whoa. Yeah. You know, whoa. Yeah, because you even commented on a photo that someone posted of this room years ago. Uh -huh. and you were like, look how bare, bare. it looks. It was just completely bare. Um, and that's not even to mention, you know, any kind of studio stuff. But, right. 
just what's on the walls and the soundproofing and yeah, whatever. Yeah, you've got to go with those intuitive feelings when you have them. You just never know yeah. why they're there. But So let's see. The next question that I asked was, true or false, psychic work is evil work or work of the devil or a demonic source? And zero people said that this was true, and that makes me very happy. Me because too. It is not demonic work. <laughs> Do that's, I sound demonic? No, that's the farthest thing from the truth, you know. Yeah. We're not sacrificing goats and <laughs> burning crosses and what have you, you know. We're we're talking about just questions that I think a lot of human beings want to talk about yeah. and, and ask. And sometimes the truth is, do we all really ever have the answers? Well, right. nobody really knows until the end, but I'm pretty darn sure, you know, with what's happened lately in life that yeah. a lot of it's true, you know? So, and it's sad. It's sad that people want to suppress these gifts It is um, because sad. kind of exactly where you're coming from, as far as you mentioned it before about, you know, being the evidentiary. Oh yes. The, I'm considered an evidentiary medium, which means that I, I show evidence of, that I'm communicating with the spirit that I'm communicating, say I'm communicating with, right. like their hobbies or um, kids they had, or I don't know. There's so many things that they throw at me, but those are the things that say that yes, you're communicating. It's to with identify. Them. Yes, they're identifying through you right. to their loved one, like it's me. Right. And the only way you would know this if I shared this kind of silly little thing. Right. But I've seen people sit in readings and be like, "But I'm so nervous, and I don't know." What's going on? So my mind's racing, and yeah. sometimes you overlook something you knew or forgot, or right. maybe you haven't seen yet. Well, and people think, like, okay, spirits will do some crazy things. They will do crazy things. I'll, I'll tell you a pretty cool story here. I have a client whose son died by suicide, and I went into the house for the first time to pet sit, and... The first thing that I hear when I walk in the door from the spirit of their son is, aren't you afraid? And I said, afraid of what? And he said, the house is haunted. And I (laughs) said, there's no such thing as a haunted house. And I flip on the light and the light bulb shatters. (laughs) And I was scared the crap out of me. Right. He's like laughing over there. He was laughing. He's (laughs) always laughing at me. Um, But that was pretty funny. Looking back, it, it was quite amusing so they can do things right um my mom does things all the time for us so but people take those things as like signs of those that are bad or demons evil, or yeah. evil they're not gonna hurt no. you i promise like you, they that, are not gonna hurt that you that gif you see floating around um or meme excuse me that's like a picture of some old Scary looking cabin out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, would you spend the night here? Oh, yeah, I would. For a night. Yeah, because, I mean, other than the spiders and the exactly. bugs. Exactly. That's the worst that's thing. That's the worst of it, yeah. I think that all that stuff, like you were saying, that's yeah. man made. That's in, in movies and great for creativity and scaring the crap out of you. Right. But it's just not reality. It's not. It's not. And, you know, I think that people, when there's something that they can't explain, they want to put labels on it. And if somebody has some weird sense like this, some sixth sense, they want to put an evil label on it because they don't understand it. There's nothing evil about me. There's nothing evil about any of the girls that I work with. We all come from wanting, we want to help people with their grief. We want to help give animals better lives. How is that evil? Last night, I had a lady that had to put her dog to sleep and it was on the free reading page that she posted this and I said you know what I'm gonna PM you I'm not dealing with this on page so I private messaged her and we talked and I started crying and you were working on your art and came out and yeah, <laughs> you were really like, sweet Whoa. you know what's wrong what did and I do like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even do anything I was in the back room I swear no I, but those things do hit really really hard sometimes and if this was evil work why would 
I have such deep emotions. I feel the pain of these people. Right. I read their stories. There was a, a dog that was hit by a car last night that I, I did a reading for today. And I feel the emotions of those people when they're going through that. Mm -hmm. And I suffer those with them because I am an empath. Right. So how can that be evil? Right. Now, are there people that will use their psychic abilities or use this profession as a bad or evil way of getting through life? Maybe, yeah. yes. There are... There's people that do uh, evil things all the time. Every but profession. But that doesn't mean that there's some realm that's pushing them, you know, this demon in their voice. It's like I said before, that the, the kind of growing up on Looney Tunes, and I, you always saw the angel and the devil. Right. And for me... That's how I equated what goes on in my mind. Right. But the problem that I see for this world or whatever um, is that there's no accountability when it's right. looked at that way. Because anything I do, I can blame it on the devil. Right. And anything good I do, I can give credit to, you know, the angels. It's like right. you have free will. In my opinion, the only demons are human. The bad people are human. And that makes me sad because it doesn't have to be like that. But no. that's that's the way it is. It does we don't I don't think we taught our society how to deal with traumatic things that happen to us in our lives. Right. Outside of institutionalizing people or highly medicating them. It just maybe just some good old fashioned let's sit down and talk. Right. And and try to help you, you right. know. Absolutely. And maybe that doesn't work for everybody, but I'll tell you what, just shoving them, you know, in a padded cell or doping them up so much that they don't know right from left, you know, it just doesn't make, yeah, doesn't make anything any better. And that, that brings up um, a good point too, is that since I've learned about my abilities, something that I've thought about is when you see people talking to themselves mm -hmm. or, you know, especially like people that we consider crazy or on drugs, walking down the street, having full on conversations, are some of those people having conversations with the other side? Maybe they don't know it. And they don't know it. Right. Or maybe they do know it, but they can't shut the voices in their head out. Because let me tell you, when I first started, <laughs> I had to put rules. I had learned through some Facebook groups that I joined that if you put rules with the spirits, if you let them know, okay, here's the boundaries, that they will abide by them, and they will. But if you don't do those things, and you don't meditate to clear your mind, there's all kinds of crazy things that can happen in your head. It took a little while for me to figure that out when I first started learning to meditate, that I would start to have visions, and then I would hear, like, this record scratching, almost. It's really yeah, I remember hard to... you telling me about that. Yeah, it was uh, very strange. And so what I learned was that as I got deeper into the meditation, those would start to fade. So it was really just my own thoughts trying to overtake the thoughts from the other side or the intuitive thoughts or whatever it is. So meditation teaches you to shut down that side of your brain, really, so that you can listen to what they have to say. Yeah. And if you don't shut that down, you could have all kinds of crazy things going on yeah. in your head. I think it definitely, like I think we talked touched on that last week, that last episode, that going out in nature really helps me center with mm -hmm. that a lot more. And when I don't do that, um, or there's long spans in between, I feel less connected. I feel more frustrated. Um, I feel like maybe I don't see the signs as much. Right. One of the things that was a huge issue for me, it still occasionally is, is uh, what I call psychic panic attack. I've learned more now how to decipher my own thoughts from the intuitive thoughts. So I don't have this as often. But sometimes... I will get a thought that I can't decipher if it's my own or if it's intuitive and I'll start obsessing over it, especially if it's a bad thought. And I will start talking to myself in circles and hyperventilating. And that happened a lot at first. And I was good at covering it up, but 
it was very taxing on me. And I think that my grandmother was psychic, but we didn't know this. This is something I've learned since she has passed. That's one of the reasons why she didn't really use her abilities and why she was always such a nervous wreck was because she didn't know what was what. Right. What was was that an intuitive thought? Was that my own thought? And that can make you crazy. You have to learn how to change that through meditation, and or you can end up in a padded cell. I have no doubt. Oh yeah, no doubt that some of those people that we see walking around talking to themselves are not on drugs. They are not crazy. They just are talking to the other side. And don't know what's going. On. I definitely believe there's some people out there that yeah have yeah. been put into a category that they don't really belong. They just aren't aware of what's happening to them. Absolutely. And I wonder how many people that are diagnosed with that kind of mental illness mm -hmm. um, because, because I, I could, people don't want to look at the right. reality. I classify sometimes things I hear as hearing voices. <clears throat> right. Sometimes I have a thought and I'm like, that's not my thought. I don't know whose thought that was, but that was not my thought. Right. And so, I, yeah, I could definitely see that. I'll tell people. you the thing that's interesting is, is um, the thing we watched with Tyler Henry about what happens in the brain. Oh, yeah. When there's psychic activity happening. That was a great show. Oh, that was amazing. So I'll, I'll give a little bit of, of history on this. If you don't know who Tyler Henry is, he's considered the Hollywood medium. And honestly, like he's celebrity mentor to me i guess you'd say he is just this sweet little blonde <laughs> guy can't be more than 23 years old yeah and just wonderful wonderful heart and his show yeah, is amazing sweet. and he does readings for celebrities and um so this episode that he did he did a reading for steve-o and steve-o was a huge skeptic you could see it written all over steve-o's face at the beginning like totally hard right but the thing that made this reading different was that Dr. Drew had it done for him at a brain institute. Yeah. And they put a cap on his head and read his brain waves while he was doing steve -O's reading. And that was cool <laughs> because you could see that his brain waves were changing. It was amazing. Yeah. And they even said, because Dr. Drew, he wants to take it from a scientific standpoint. I think he said something of... Like, our thoughts are imprinted on us, and, and the psychics are just reading those thoughts, or whatever the case may be. I can't remember completely, but yeah, he, he wanted to, mis to, to disprove it, and he couldn't after that. Because what he was seeing was that when Tyler was doing these readings, he was going into almost a sleep-like state. Yeah. And that really is, to me, what it feels like when I do a reading, or even when I do, like, a deep meditation it really is like a sleep like state like a trance but what's happening is is in these conversations on the television show he's having a reading with somebody and it looks like he's having a normal conversation mm -hmm. but according to the brain waves yeah. what's being printed out is that he's waking up going to sleep yep. waking up going to sleep waking up going to sleep and it's happening within seconds of each other yeah that that your brain can actually you know how long does it take you to fall asleep at night Right. How can he do it that quick? And and that's what they were saying. They're like, we don't see this. This isn't something that we see in, it's in brain scans. And even Dr. Drew, he said that when, because when we do readings, a lot of times we'll say, I see, or I hear, or I feel. And when he would say, I see that something, it would activate the part of his brain where you would see. And same with hearing. It activated that part of the brain. That's incredible to me. And I love that he did that because that's something that I've been thinking about for a long time is like they need to do more studies like that because I really think that they could prove it once and for all mm -hmm. that there is something different happening in our brains. There was research that I did while I was doing all this stuff um, that I wasn't expecting to find, but I had always wondered about like health conditions in mediums, which yeah. we'll do. I'll do that in another episode, but it confirmed my beliefs that we have a lot more physical ailments than other people, sometimes by 75% more people. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that go on in our brains and in our bodies. And 
we handle a lot of different kinds of stress than most people that they might not understand. It takes a lot of energy to do this kind of work. Oh, I see it when you yeah. come out of, you know, do especially the circles. The circles wear me um, out. Yeah. yeah. It, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in from a lot of people waiting in line to talk it is, through you're, you. <laughs> you're dealing with the people's energy and you're dealing with the spirit's energy. And if the people have negative energy, they're sucking your positive energy out. And that yeah. makes it even harder. So it's constantly a battle of balance and trying to make sure that, you know, you stay focused and your energy stays balanced. So by the time you're done, it's like, I just need to sleep for two days, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, you do great with it, and it's a it's a cool experience. I'm telling you, I've I've had <laughs> I've been in all kinds of situations in my life, and you know, like I said, churches and meetings and whatnot, and I've felt the same thing in those rooms that I felt mm-hmm. in the other room. You know, that it's just it's unity, it's connection, right. and if the more people you can have, it helps to have more people, but. The higher you can raise your vibration yeah. is when you feel their presence. Mm-hmm. And that is, to me, you know, the gift. Yep, absolutely. So there was another question that I wanted to touch on, and it kind of comes back to the Tyler Henry thing a little bit, is um, one of the myths that I saw online is real psychics don't don't charge for their services, which is a bunch of, you know what. Right. Um, But coming back to Tyler Henry on that, when I did the research and I started seeing things about him, that's one of the things that gets people to say that this isn't real because we charge, okay? And I don't think that that's the case at all. I think that this is a skill. It's a gift. Yeah. Just like an artist or a musician or a doctor or Or whatever, that's your gift. You have to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. But people online were calling Tyler Henry um, a charlatan and a cold reader and all of these things because he gets paid a lot of money on TV to read for celebrities. But this kid, he has been a medium since he could talk and he has worked his way up and he has worked in shops and done medium circles and yeah. He is a wonderful, wonderful soul, and I got mad when I saw those oh, things yeah. about him online. I was Did like, "Not mad with Mama on this, this yeah, one." Yeah, this is this is. I, I love him. I would really love to meet him. When that's like, I think there's a good chance you might. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe, but I'm not. I don't get starstruck. But I think that if I got to meet him, it would I, be. His I guy. would be starstruck, right. probably. And then we'd be best friends, and we'd have ice cream and skip <laughs> off into the sunset. <laughs> Because seriously, when I watch him on TV, oh. it's like watching myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, he has the same strange mannerisms you that I have. You guys are similar in a lot of ways. Because yeah. we're kind of, in, well, very soft. much introverts yeah. and we're soft. And so I see a lot of myself in him and, and I just want to hug him. Yeah. So And not in a stalkerish kind of way. Anyways, <laughs> so going back to charging for services, I really believe that, that this gift is given to us for a lot of different reasons. It is definitely given to me to provide for other people, to help other people with their grief, and to do as many good things as I can with it as possible. However, I still have a family, and I still have to to support my family and myself and take care of things. And how do you do all of that if you can't charge for your services? Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that there's a point where maybe it gets extensive. Yeah. You know? But... I mean, a, a good psychic reader, there's nothing wrong with paying them. And a lot of people may not know this, but police departments and detective agencies use psychics and mediums all the time. Right. All the time. So yeah. they get paid not just like that, but, you know. I even relate that kind of to, in a music sense, uh, that, you know, I see this huge um, surge like in um, cover bands in, in the music scene. It, and that's all great because the songs they play, I grew up on. I love pieces. Yeah. Every musician wants to get paid, yeah. you know? However, I feel like that shouldn't be the most important thing. Because no. I know our band would play a show for free. Um, and we have done many shows for free. We play original music. 
So most audiences want to hear, you know, right. something they that's familiar. They know they can dance. To yeah, and so that yeah. part bums me out because I go, "Where's the next great song come from?" Right. Because if everybody's spending their time learning everybody else's songs to go perform them on Friday, Saturday night, right. who's going to write the next Stairway to Heaven? Right. Totally. You know, who's right. going to write all these great songs? And that might be a terrible example, but just pop. No, up. I don't think it is at all because I think that we do a lot of work in you with art and music and me with this. We do a lot of free work because it's what helps get you out there. It's what helps people know what your skills are. That's why I do the free reading group so that I can show people what I can do before they pay me for a reading. Yeah. There are bad people that will try and scam you i have had it happen to me i actually because i have like i said i've seen quite a few psychics in my life and and here's here's a good story for (laughs) you of somebody that was definitely trying to take my money there was um, a local psychic here that i went to a little ways after i moved um, back to southern california i was in a relationship that i knew i needed to get out of but i felt like i needed that little bit of confirmation maybe that i needed to get out right and instead of telling me that i needed to get out this psychic told me that i she if i gave her walmart gift cards she would go to walmart and buy men's clothes (laughs) and women's clothes and build a virtual me and a virtual him and that somehow this would make it so that we would be together forever (laughs) luckily i knew that I didn't want to be with him forever. And so I walked out of there and ran, basically, out fast. <laughs> and it, it just showed me that you can't rely on a psychic for information about your future, about your love life. No. We can only point you in the direction in which you should go. However, if there's something like that that comes with it, it's not. It's not real. It's... Those things, a, a good medium and a good psychic would not try and take more money from you. It will not try and sell you additional services like that or tell you that there's a curse on you. That is where the problems come in, and that's where sometimes we get a bad name is those those types of people um, or even the ones that I see it all the time on some of these groups where people will pretend to be psychic. Yeah. And they will yeah, you you know. show me some pretty funny examples. Oh, of that. yeah. I had a girl that tried to be a, an approved reader in my group and she tested and all, everything that she was getting was off of the Internet. I'm like, lady, first of all, I'm a psychic. OK, so I could, you know, smell your issue when you came into my group to begin with. But. Then I knew immediately that she was getting this information off the Internet. I just had to prove it. And I did. I set her up. Mm-hmm. And she fell for the bait. And Yes, she did. Yeah. And, and then she tried to come back from it a couple of times, even telling me that I was a bad psychic because I was actually talking to her 14-year-old daughter and didn't know that. I mean, it's just stuff like this that we deal right. with all the time. And you just have to There's keep your There's a bad apple in every bunch. There is. In every scenario, every situation, every arena, it sucks. But that's just life. But I don't think yeah. it means that, you know. No. It doesn't mean that we're all bad. It doesn't mean right. that we're all, you know, in yeah. this for the wrong no. reasons. Because or I'm, that you're even doing it just for money because you do no. a lot of stuff for free in this I'm not arena, in this so. for the money at all. I, I mean, I have to make a living, but <clears throat> I'm not in this for the money. I, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to help people and I want to help animals. And that's it. Go with it. Yeah. That's what I say. So... I do can, it. Why I, don't you just do it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's see. I think um, we pretty much covered everything, didn't we? I Say, think so. Yeah, I think so. So. Well, that went quick again. It always does. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Wind us up. Get us started. Yep. And then you have to shut us down. And you got to shut us down. Well, I guess this is the time where we wrap it up and do a little pluggy plug, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so let's got? see. Um, I do have something coming up next month. This is the first one of these types of events that I'm doing, so I'm kind of excited about it. It's called the Health and Healing Expo, and it's going to be here in Southern California at the Hyatt Westlake Village on June 23rd. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and I will have a reader table there. 
So you can nice. come in and get a reading from me. It will be thirty dollars for fifteen minutes. They set the appointments up for me and everything. But I'm excited about this. Yeah. So if anybody local, you know, Go wants down to come check down it out. and support what I'm it. doing, yeah, check it out. Good. So, um, I'll good for you. Tell you guys about that again as we get closer. So you don't forget. So that's all that I really have going on. But let me tell you our pages and my pages and where you can get a hold of us. So for my reading business, that is Facebook Beyond the Bridge 11. I also have a, a website, which is samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. And then, of course, all of our pages, including now Twitter, which is Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. We have our iTunes. Love your reviews on iTunes and Facebook. Keep them coming. Nice. We're everywhere. Yes. Good. Sounds cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you're into art and music, uh, check out my art pages on Facebook and Instagram at D Jones Art Collection. Uh, I just recently did a Louis Armstrong that I put up, and um, oh, and it's amazing! Thank you very much. Yeah, one came out good. I'm pleased with it. Yeah. The response was always nice. Everybody has really cool things to say. Thank you, everybody that that does. Give yeah, feedback because that's that's really why I do this and music is I want to move people, yes. you know, emotionally and and make them ponder and think about things like we're doing now, I guess. Yeah, that's what we've been given so, these gifts for. Yeah, so but yeah, you could check out my art and um also working on a web page which is not up yet, but that will be pretty soon. So I'm looking right. forward to that. That'll and, be exciting. Uh, I'm working on another painting, but that won't be up for a little bit. And if you follow those pages, you'll see each one that I put up. Yeah. And once this web page is up, then I'll be able to offer prints for sale. That'll be exciting. At different sizes. So. Yeah. But um, we do have a song this week. We are going to finally play a Gypsy Brown song. Yay, Gypsy Brown. Yay. Um, it's old. It's from 2015. Um, we recorded this uh, with Kurt PR at Proving Ground Studios, another Kurt PR demo thanks kurt appreciate it we still enjoy it um so this is tom kelly on vocals uh guitar and he also plays harmonica but not on this song uh and then there's brian huffman plays guitar and vocals on this song as well um <clears throat> tony warner anthony warner uh, on the drums uh brian ward does not perform on the song, but is in the band. So we'll go ahead and just give you credit, Brian Ward. Hey, Brian Ward. <laughs> Yay, Brian. <laughs> and then myself on guitar uh, and backup vocals. So anyways, we hope you enjoy it. The song is called There's a Way. If you're interested in us, you can find us on the web. We're on Reverb Nation. Um, and we also have a web page, uh, gypsybrown.com. And that's brown with an E, in case you don't know. So anyways, we hope you enjoy it. Have a great week. Thanks yes. for listening in again, you guys. We really appreciate it. We do. Can't wait to give you some more info and talk some more to you next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, have a great week, everybody. Take it easy. Peace, Peace and, and love.
child inside cause we're bought and we're taught and we're beat to believe and believing it's to see Say 